are mortals, I am Dark Lord Kaiser, and we are back for what I'm hoping is going to be the last episode of The Room. It would be nice to actually finish a series on the channel for once. Um, not that I'm not planning to finish other series, it's just this one's nice and short, so I can just get it gone. Though, the way the Talos Principle's behaving recently, there's a good chance I may have to knock that one on the head sooner rather than later. But, I shall persevere for the moment. Continuing with the game. Oh... Hey, so let's just refresh our memories about what we had last time. We had a pad. There we are. Wouldn't be zooming in there. With half a doodle on it. We have a note. Which again, why is it not? Oh, it's a double click. That's it. With AS writing something. But most importantly, we've got this little keyboard doodad up there, which hope I'm assuming will come in later. We've got. A missing piece here that we don't have. Uh, we have, you can see the keys in there already. We've taken the parts out of there, which we have up here, a handle and a weird shaped key, which I haven't looked at yet. Tarot cards won't be interesting, important. I was going to say interesting, but actually, important is a better term. Hello. I don't recall this before. S, squiggles, triangles. What, uh, one, two, three. Triangle squiggle S. Is that to do with these over here? Um, triangle squiggle S. Put the wrong S. Is the S with antennae? Okay. So it's this one. That one. That one, but I don't know how to input that yet. And that will presumably then lift this little bit up here. Can I zoom in? Oh, this is to be zoomed in. Magic eye of magic, help! You do not help. Right, let's stop faffing about with guessing random puzzles. Look at this. So we've got a key with a symbol at the bottom here. It seemed to be okay. Square. Peg. Doesn't seem to be anything I can manipulate with it. And we have a handle with again two square pegs on the side there, but doesn't appear to be any anything I can manipulate that I can see from here. No buttons or anything. Okay. Well, that was like where the key goes to me. Ram it on in there. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, magic eye. No, okay, I can just turn that. And it, I meant to try and move the whole thing with the magic eye on, so I can turn this. Right, it's got three dots on it, pointing to a squiggly symbol, which doesn't seem to match any of these. Okay. Can I do a thing? Can I do a thing? I can't seem to do a thing. Right. Curious and curious. Anything on the top I haven't looked at yet? No. Go away, Jesus wept, it's so hard to... Okay, so when I look at the top it only takes me to this angle, so something's going to happen there later. Okay, I'm going to make a stab in the dark, this is where this goes. That was a turny thing, that was a pulley thing. Well, here's the piano. AS, assist. So, that one, this one. Bing, bong. There we go. Okay, a coin slot. Okay. Oops, I should just turn it a bit so. 
let's see, is there anything I can play with this particular... Oh, that was out of tune. Oh, so I think I'll have to start at C, wouldn't it? Ah. There we go. I'm going to run out of keys though, I need to go all the way to C again. It's full octave. So if I was going to start here with that, this is just a tangent of me playing around my piano, so it's that one. I think it must go to here, wouldn't it? That's going to be weird. Let's do that one. Doing that. There we go. That one. Ah. Ah. Yeah, I got there in the end, even if some of the clicks did do weird things. Let's hope that doesn't end up with any copyright strikes in any way. But I think it was far enough away from the original thing for it to be, uh, to not matter. But if it does, uh, buggery. But let's, let's, let's assume we're fine for the moment, so. Magic, I have magic, you gonna help? No. So, can I do anything here? What's this thing? Now, oh, I've got a slot for a coin, but nothing else is built to interact with. Okay. I don't have a coin yet. So, what's all this nonsense about then? Turn anything? Hmm. Nothing in the background I've missed, is there? I can't see anything. Right, let's have a wander around with the magic eye of magic, see if I see anything new. I am not getting my hopes up about that particular thing. We've already covered that bit, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, we covered it. Get, get going. Right. Okay. Is there anything on this that I've missed? Nope. Ah! This has changed now. Okay. So I need to go... Oh, right, of course, these are related to these three. So I need to go to here. And that gives me... I'm not past it. How the hell did I manage that? Ah! Oh. Okay. And that's now giving me... Oh. Right, so this is giving me the solution to these two, then, it would seem. So this needs to be two backward C's. That needs to be four... Hanging underneath an eye. Well, Quavers hanging underneath an eye. I should probably get my uh, terminologies right. So now if I turn this to here. I need to turn this one now to be four Quavers beneath an eye. Now if I turn this to. No, not to there. There. I should now. Be able to change this to the two C's. There we go. It doesn't appear to have helped. Thus, clearly, the magic eye of magic is needed. The, the, the magic magic eye of magic. Help. Okay. So that must have done something else somewhere then. Maybe I have to turn it back to the first one? Oh! I have buttons now. Okay. Right. So I've got a code wheel. OK. 
can adjust. And four rods of the null element. Uh, right. Ah. C. So I guess I just have to turn them till I find the numbers. Aha. Yes. So now it's five, seven, three. Okay. Five, seven, three. Victory for the Dark Lord. In that goes. Now this comes. All right. It's a cube. What, what do I do with said cube? Can't zoom in on it. Oh, okay. So, so still here and there, right? So that's saying bottom right. What do I do? Saying this wants to be here, doesn't it? But I can't. I can't do the thing. Can't direct with any of them. Help! Not you. I don't want help from you. Okay. Still haven't got anywhere with this. So. This is the only new thing I have to work with, so I've got to be able to do something with it. A socket for something, okay. So if I was to put something in there, I can manipulate the cube. Right. Do you come back out? No. I think. Do we... Okay, I can do... Okay, so that's how I deal with, deal with that. So we said it was that one. Oh, hang on. No, we didn't. We said it was that one, that one, and that one. And there's my coin. Yeah, I've got it. Give it my way. And now if we go back to the piano, and we ram this... Uh, Talisman Curios Company. Boiler Organ Token. What's on the back? So clearly he's been you know, going to places and getting people to make him these things. Sorry, what? Ah, I angered it. Okay. Damn it! Oh, I actually have to get it to play it first. Do, 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 do. Right, next. There you go. Next. Do, 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 do. Nice little tune. Ah, there I've got me windy doodars. You couldn't have just given me them as a pair, could you? No. Bloody busy work, I swear. Okay. Can I have this back? I want the back. Oh well. Right. Moving on to the thing and to what nas. That can go in there. That can go in there. Magic I have magic. Reveal your secrets. Okay. So. Bottom right, top left. Okay. Right, how does that affect the thing on the other side? Ah, I have a thing there now. Oh, okay, so I think I have to go with... 
Also, if I turn this round, so uh, this is at this top corner here. So I think if I turn this round completely down the other side of the cube. Oh, interesting. It's over there now. Okay. Ah, I know what I need to do. Bring this up here and then I rotate it that way instead. There we are. So yes, whatever's on the opposite face of the cube, I can slide things into. But I've got to... Up here, turn it round. Which corner do I want? <laughs> I've lost the plot. So, yeah, I want one in this corner down here. So, if I turn this all the way around like that. No, nope. there we are. That can then slide into there. And now I just need to make sure I get one in the top corner. Alright, well, it's not there. I'll find it. There it is. So, yeah, actually. That's what I want. Bam! Big creep of the Dark Lord. Stupid Rubik's Cube. Oh, and I got a red gem and a metal plate. Neat. What is the purpose of all of this? What am I trying to achieve? Right. Why did I even come to my... I don't even know what the relation is between my player character and the... Uh, the guy who made the flipping box puzzle stuff. Is he my uncle? Father? Grandfather? He's just a weird guy who lives across the street? What is all this? Oh. Found some bacteria. Is, is is that helpful? Okay, so I'm guessing that this red gem has created these red lines. So when I get more gems in place, I will get more lines. I can't zoom in on it from this side, so yeah, I have to go through there. So that means. What are I? Okay. That gets me the blue gem. Okay, I see how this works. So I can go up there. Okay, this is interesting. I come down here. Give me room to move these away. Go up here. Room to do that. That can come. No, it can't come there. That can go there, though. That can go up there. That gives me this one. Bam. Oh, geez, but okay. So now I just need to bring yellow down. Line those around it. Take those up there. Get rid of those empty ones. Yellow for the win. Or should I say, victory for the Dark Lord. Neat. Right, uh, blue. What did I say? Okay, green. Yellow. Right. So, I. I think it was telling me I could probably take it back out again. I'm willing to bet that when I look through this with the Magic Eye of Magic, these um, things will form a picture. But I'll need to rearrange the gems to actually get the picture I want. So it's possible I click this and I'll have everything in place. As you can see, I do not. So if we assume we can't move the red one. Well, we'll find out. We'll just do jiggery pokery. Are going to take the red one out? The red one is fixed in place. Right, so let's put... Blue was there, so I'll put the blue there. Oh, actually, let's let's be sensible about this. If I look through like this, I can see if they're connected already. So that looks to me like it's connected. So I'm willing to bet the blue is now in the right place. Put the green in. Magic guy of magic tells us the green is 
not in the right place. That doesn't seem to connect up with the other things. Thus, we can deduce that green must go in the other slot. By extension, yellow must go in this one. Victory for the Dark Lord. Look at that. Bam. Beautiful. Seriously, why am I doing all this? What am I actually hoping to get out of this, aside from the null element, which I didn't even know about when I started? Okay, we've got another sliding puzzle. Right. Okay. Right, so get X into the hole. Got it. How do I? Right. So, we're only a limited number of options. This doesn't even strike as a puzzle. There's literally only one thing I can ever seem to do at a time. Yeah, so this only ever connects with that one. Get up there. That one only connects with this one. Which only connects with this one. Which connects with this one. We're not having to deduce anything here. I'm literally, there's only one possible path I can take. Which, given the number of possible paths, is perhaps for the best, but... Still just feels more like busy work than uh, proving my worth. Oh, okay. We've hit an impasse. So is that Amos? Does that go back into there? Let's have a gander. So that and goes on to here. Here we go. And then it goes into the th into the thing. Now I have a blue shiny thing. Magic I have magic. So wait. Oh, that's for you. You were back out. Um, aha! Align the upper. Gotchas. Okay, that's giving me another one. Cheers, AS. Glad you've got. had so much bloody time on your hands. Do, 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 do. Do 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 do. Oh, maybe we just that one. Yep, there we go. In it goes again. Now we've got, and we're back with this again. Let's go with magic. Oh, I can rotate it now. There's me lying the upper. There's me lying the upper. Which bit can I rotate? Oh, I rotate there. Okay. Let's go go like that. Bam, victory to the Dark Lord. Next! Why did I have to do that twice? What's the purpose of that? Oh, is that the door out of Stonehenge now? Oh, I broke the magic eye of magic. Yay! We, we did it. You made it through, unflustered, I hope, as there will surely be sterner tests to come. You have taken the first step on a longer journey. Do you no benefit in hiding the truth of your predicament? There is no way back. Oh, gee, thanks. Not for any of us. For now, you are as trapped as I. Press forward with heart, my friend. There are more rooms ahead. I'm guessing I was supposed to read that in AS's voice, so let's do that. You made it through, unflustered, I hope as there will surely be sterner tests to come. You have taken the first step on a longer journey. I see no benefit in hiding the truth of your predicament. There is no way back. Not for any of us. For now, you are as trapped as I. Press forward with heart, my friend. There are many more rooms ahead. Except there aren't, because the game's over now. I know there are sequels. You haven't actually explained anything. You've just introduced this null element as a thing and maybe solve a load of puzzles for no discernible reason. So, back to the main menu, I guess. Loading. Yeah, there we are. That is the room. So, let's finish this off with a bit of a review of the game for once, shall we? I mean, as I said, now I've actually reached the end of a game, I can give some actual feedback on the damn thing. So, I like the puzzles. I do 
I very much enjoy little puzzle games like that. It's uh, well, very well designed, makes me feel smart for solving most of the puzzles. There is a fair bit of busy work that does need doing as a result of the, um, the design. Now, some of that busy work is clearly coming from the fact that this is a port of a game from a uh, tablet form to a computer. So, so some of the things are, you know, you're sliding it around and, and twisting things. And it's, it makes for a more interactive experience when you're using your hands and it just detracts a little bit when you're suddenly having to use a mouse to do things. Story-wise, it's got intrigue. I'll grant you that. I, I like the, the concept of stumbling across this, this box or this safe with this note attached to it and working your way through and getting deeper and deeper into this uh, you know, discovery of this null element. Because uh, we're not learning much about um, AR as a person. I don't know why I'm tracing the room. I'm just doing something to keep some visual entertainment going. Do you ever learn a lot about AR? AS, rather. <laughs> Yes, or his relation to us. Um, again, unless that was specified in the first episode that I was his... I, for some reason I've got it in my head that he was my character's uncle. Now I don't know whether he actually was, and I'm remembering that, or I've just assumed he was because that's the stereotype in these sort of games. Mysterious, eccentric uncle presents his only living relative with the key to super secrets and stuff and things happen as a result. Again, I've, I've assumed that AS is male as well, but that's because I'm male and I'm doing the voice. There's no reason to believe that AS couldn't stand for Aunt Sophie, for example. Um, but there is also a sort of... Um, the aesthetic of the, these big mechanical puzzles, even in a sort of small box, but it all being mechanically operated with clockwork and whatnot. Um, and the, the, the tone that AS writes in that I'm obviously emulating my rather ridiculous voice. Best voice actor, shut up. Sort of gives me the feel of it being set closer to maybe the Victorian era sort of uh, sort of times, in which point it would be more likely for a scientist, which is what AS certainly seems to be, a scientist of some description, a uh, scientist historian combination thereof. It'd be more likely for them to be male than female. So step playing the odds, um, I would assume AS is male. Not that it matters. Yeah, I honestly couldn't care less whether AS is male or female. The story is what's got me intrigued. So I, I'm certainly going to give the room two a look. Because the, as a, this game, I very much enjoyed it. Um, as I said, a fair bit of busy work. I imagine that probably will translate over to the next game as well. I suspect that is also a uh, tablet game that has been ported to to a computer. I have a feeling there's also a room three. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about that, whether it's even a thing yet. I'm sure there's a room three. I could look this up, but I can't be bothered right now. So, for the moment, we'll just assume that there is a room two with a room three in the works, with the possibility of it already being completed. Now, I can might be that the room two trying to expand on the room, but clearly having room for a third sequel won't actually answer any more of our questions. So we won't find out who we are, we won't find out who AS is, we won't really learn any properties of the null element, which currently just does whatever the hell we needed to do at the time. We just seem to have some um, consistent properties in terms of uh, maybe dimensional manipulation. So we're looking at a flat surface, we use the magic eye of magic and a third dimension is sort of expanded in the, re the dimension of the null element, as it were. I don't know why I was using my hands to gesture that. I don't use a camera, you can't see what I was doing. Certainly seems to have use as a power source but needs a bizarre contraption to make it work. We kept seeing that symbol. That symbol there, in fact, seems to be very important in terms of making it work. But, again, we don't have any information about it. So my concerns with the room 2 is that it might not answer any questions and just try and build on the weirdness that we've been experiencing so far. Now, I really hope that it does um, give us some questions, some answers. And it's only the last half, maybe not half, the last couple of rooms in the room have 
sort of gone to a, a weird place, so you're solving a puzzle in, in a room, suddenly the box transports you to Stonehenge, suddenly Stonehenge transports you to a big mechanical steam engine, which then transports you to Tin and Oak, God knows what. So, my concern is that the room 2 may get a little bit more non sequitur with how you get from place to place. And there doesn't really seem to have been any reason why this um, AS person has gone to such steps to keep us from the null element, despite, you know, them ostensibly wanting us to find out about it. They gave us the means to start down this road. But. I've done so, so in such a way that we were wandering blindly. We didn't know what we were going for. We didn't know why we were going for it. We didn't know that once we started, got to a certain point, we wouldn't be able to go back. And we don't know what's at stake. So we don't know whether AS has done all of this because they simply are, you know, rather amoral and, and just wish for their research to be continued, despite the fact that... Um... Actually, hang on, hang on a thought. If they're trapped in... The room, as it were. How did they get all the stuff over to us, telling us how to get here, leaving messages along the way? Because presumably, oh, I don't know. Unless he, oh, he said he was getting visions, didn't he? So he might have known that once he got past a certain point, he wouldn't be able to go back. So left all this stuff basically as an insurance policy, so if he couldn't find a way back. He could get help from somebody else coming in to assist him. But as I said, it's not clear whether AS is simply a, a completely amoral and doesn't care that um, he's essentially trapped somebody else unknowingly in this situation, thus they have to help him to help themselves. Or whether actually there's something greater at stake that we haven't discovered yet, because clearly he was making references to the Circle and you know, other secret organisations. So it's possible that he's um, he's gone into the room, if we want to call the whole puzzle area the room, he's gone into the room in an attempt to prevent them from getting to the information and the power source and this null element, um, but was aware that if he failed he would be completely stuck and essentially has called us for backup and couldn't risk us not answering the call, as it were, so has been forced to trap us as a ends justify the means sort of thing. So It'll be very interesting. I, will, I am going to play the room 2. I'm going to give us a little bit of a gap between the room and the room 2 just so I can do a few other things. Might go back to Punch Club for a little bit, because I enjoy it, but again, I probably won't do too many episodes if nobody's interested. I am trying to keep the Talos Principle going. Unfortunately, it's... I'm getting hiccups. Sorry about that. Oh god, they won't stop. <sighs> okay. What was I saying? Talos Principle, yes. I'm attempting to get through Talos. Unfortunately, I'm having the slight issue of Every single thing I do on Talos seems to bugger me up in a different way. So, I'll do the recording, I'll record the audio, and then I'll find that the audio, despite ostensibly being longer, uh, because I start the audio, then I start the record of the video, and then I stop the record of the video, and then I stop the record of the audio. So the audio should always have a handful of seconds before and a handful of seconds after the video. And yet, the last couple of times I've gone to the Talos Principle, I found the audio starting here, stopping there, and the video going on for a couple of minutes afterwards. So clearly I'm losing some synchronicity in um, the audio and the visual stuff. Now I can adjust the speed of the video to match up, I had to do that last time, but then there's still a synchronization issue because one second in the video is no longer one second in the audio, so I then have to split everything up and move things around to try and get them resynchronized. And also, for some bloody reason, the last few minutes of um, ta of Talos, whenever I put it into Lightworks, always just seems to randomly just stop, turn black, and just have a black screen for the last bit. Now, when I open the video file in any other program, those last few minutes are still there, but Lightworks is just not registering them, and I can't figure out why. A couple of times, I've had to, and this is just how the levels of absurdity I'm having to work at to make this damn thing work. I'm having to get to the point in light works where it stops, figure out what the last frame of um, actual video things you can see is, then import the Bandicam file into Windows Movie Maker, go along to the same point in the frame count, go one frame further, so it's the first frame 
of the black screen, delete everything before that point, then create a video file of just that last little bit, and then stitch it together in the Lightworks thing. Which is why if you watch, you will notice uh, at certain points there will be a sort of a noticeable change in like the quality. It'll only be just like that quickly, it'll be gone. Uh, but if you know exactly where you're looking, you can suddenly see that like, it's like a train switching tracks. And it's really bloody annoying. Which means Talos just takes longer to um, edit down. It doesn't help that because I'm getting towards the end of the game, the puzzles are harder. So I'm not actually, in the time limit I'm giving myself for a video, I'm not actually getting much further along uh, progression wise. So if I end up stuck for a while, I've then got a huge section of the stuff to cut out. Which means the actual recording is going to be longer, so it takes me longer to get through the editing. It's just, it's a faff. I, I will, I'm going to try at least one more Talos video that's normal. I am planning to do, if I can find time, obviously as a work schedule is going to be weird for the next uh, month or so. Uh, I'm going to find time to try and find just a bunch of Easter eggs and make a video, an Easter special video of Talos using that. Which should be easier because the actual bits I'll be recording will be in smaller samples. And I probably won't record audio at the time. Or, or at least if I do record audio at the time, I might not include it in the final products. I'll only record it if, um, I'll only include it rather if, you know, there's some big surprise I haven't seen and I just want to have my, you know, default reaction to it. Um, unfortunately, when I did the previous special, the New Year special, I tried recording at the same time. Um, but there was just such long periods of nothing that it was easy just to record commentary over the top after the fact. So I'll probably end up doing that again, but I won't rule out um, a few snippets of my actual reactions at the time as well. Wow, considering I finished the actual game about 10 minutes ago, I've just waffled for a bit. I better call it a day before everyone just leaves. You've already left, haven't you? Yep, bastards. Alright, I'm done. Bye. Bye. <laughs>